Hi, welcome back to Paint With Josh. You look fantastic this morning. What have you done with your hair? My goodness. Well, at least you clicked on this link. You want to learn how to paint this video, right? So we did a gorgeous 16 by 20 inch Aurora Borealis. Beautiful little mountain off in the distance. Seven fantastic looking little pine trees. Bushes in between. Snowy little meadow like we could just walk out onto it. And man, I'm excited about it. You obviously want to learn how to paint it. So check the description down below. Make sure you get all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. Let's do it just like this. I like to tell you what we have on the palette just in case, right? have our brand new bottle of Bob Ross Liquid Clear. Looks just like this. It's fantastic, fantastic stuff. And we've taken our canvas and covered it in our Bob Ross Liquid Clear. So it's very wet and very slick. Now we need to take a paper towel and just wipe off any excess amount of clear. And you'll, you'll be amazed at how much actually comes off, right? In order to get it nice and covered and even across our entire canvas, whoop, gripped our whole paper towel. Look at that. A lot of excess comes off. So. You don't wanna to have too much on your canvas. It can make it hard to do our job, right? And if it's hard to do the job, then it's not gonna be fun. And if it's not fun, you're not gonna to wanna to do it. Tell me where you're watching from and what's your favorite sandwich. I'm gonna get one of the mods in here and we'll read out some comments. Let's see, who do I got? Riley, Riley. Excellent, thank you, Riley. Tell the people, tell me where the people are checking in from. Everybody check in, where are you checking in from? While we wash this brush. Georgia, Michigan, Oklahoma, Texas, Oregon. Wow. Jeez. California, Tennessee, Maine. Coming in like crazy. All right, so we're doing a tutorial for this one. So we'll try to keep the, the questions and commentary to a minimum. And that way we don't have to do so much editing. And, uh, but every so often I'm gonna ask you guys to type in your favorite food emoji or where you're from. Tell us what time it is. What's your favorite sandwich, all that stuff. And uh, throughout the live, we'll keep checking in where we're from, right? We get new people show up all the time. So let's go through all the colors we have here that we're probably going to use. We went through them once before, but cad yellow, bright red, dark sienna, van dyke brown. Uh, sorry, that's cad yellow. That's yellow ochre. Hello. You show up in my live unannounced, so yes. I thought I'd show up in yours. Come on in. I had a request in, and you picked Riley over me. Oh, did you? I, no, no. Don't no, well, change it. No, no, Come no, up no, here. Don't talk about it. No. <laughs> So we're gonna use our Thalo Green, Prussian Blue, Elizabeth Crimson, Midnight Black, and Titanium White. So let's go into the green first. I love that green. Go into that greenish color. Is the music too loud? I don't think the music's too loud. If the music's too loud, you're too old. You're too old, get out of the kitchen. No, that's a different saying. Okay, a little bit of our uh, dark Thalo Green in here. And it's a transparent color, so it stays dark and green and almost looks black on our canvas. Yeah, what's up? you face the cameras and tell everyone who you are? Yeah, so I'm in, my name's Paint with Josh, and uh, I've been painting for about four years. I'm not Bob Ross. I know you guys tell me all the time, but I'm not. And then people yell at me for going, well, he's not Bob Ross. How could you agree? So I'm not Bob Ross, but yes, I'm the next Bob Ross, right? If enough people say it, it must be true. That's how I'm going to look at it. If Josh enough Ross. people say it, it must Josh be Ross. true. So let's go into our dark Prussian blue. Guys, don't forget to hit that follow button subscribe if you can over on YouTube and Facebook. Josh Definitely. is currently filming a tutorial that will be out on Wednesday. I'm done. I'm the London Candle Company. I'm going back downstairs so that I can fall asleep to watching this live. I hope you don't fall asleep <laughs> stay till the end. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. Bye. So we're going to take our Prussian Blue. We're going to go through it just like that, loading it up nice and thick right on top of all the green. Look at the little differences in our light there. On top of all that green, so it, I mean, they're gonna all mix in anyway, right? That doesn't matter where we put them. They're gonna overlap and they're gonna mix and it's gonna turn and it's gonna change. And maybe we'll put some blue down here. So remember, if you're just tuning in, tell us where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Make sure you hit that follow button. Give me a power tap and uh, go check out the London Candle Co. on Etsy, londoncandleco.etsy.com. And if you wanna buy this painting before we even finish painting it, you can go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and you'll be able to purchase this painting while we're doing it, right? And then you can decide what it looks like. So let's wash all the color off of that brush. Let's wash it off. Where we got people checking in from, Riley? Uh, let me scroll up a little. Let's see. We've got someone in here from Missouri and it's not me, it's someone else. Hey! Uh, Alberta, Canada, Hawaii slash Utah. Awesome. Alabama, Miami. Hey, Miami. New York, Massachusetts, Kentucky. London says his couch. His couch. That's true. She's oh, down there. Someone from Malaysia. Oh, that's cool. 
Wyoming, Virginia. That is cool. That is cool. So can you guys see, I've, I've kind of changed the camera angle so there should be much less glare. That's my hope anyway. And we have less glare on the canvas. So let's grab up a couple fan brushes. Probably gonna need two fan brushes. Doesn't matter what size they are. Just have one for a light color and maybe one for a dark color if we need it or one for a different color, right? So let's go in and make sure it's dabbed off so it's nice and soft, right? These get beat to death. So don't worry about these old fan brushes. I got new ones we'll use later. So let's come in and we have to decide where we want to have our northern lights come in, right? And we're going to do a northern light scene. This is down below. It's more of like a cloudy scene uh, versus the northern lights, but same colors anyway. So we're going to come across with our northern lights and then we're going to angle them a certain way. And all of our swipes are going to be very important, right? So we need to decide what color we want to make those northern lights first. It's going to mix in with the green and blue underneath. So why don't we take a little bit of our white. And we'll mix that in with a little bit of our brightest yellow, that cad yellow over here, right? Drop a little bit in there. You don't need too much because they're, they're both very, very, very powerful and very bright colors on this black canvas. So you don't need too much of either. All right, we're going to mix them up just like this, nice and softly. You know what I'm going to do before I forget to zoom in that other camera that I'm filming with. And so I don't have to do so much editing. There we go. And it doesn't... Thank you, Katie, for the roses. Okay, yes, thank you for the gifts. You guys are awesome. I appreciate it. Okay, we're gonna come in with these northern lights, right? We're gonna load up our fan brush just by wiggling it through, just like that. Wiggle it through, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it. Just so it's on the tip of the brush. You don't need to fill it up all the way. Just so it's on the tip, right? And then we'll come in here and just decide, maybe I want like a little S-shaped one for this guy, right? You don't know what it looks like. You never know. You never know until we paint it, right? So. Throw a little S shape off and then I'll show you exactly what we're talking about. We need to decide what angle we're gonna be shooting off. You know, what angle is it come down and slapped onto our canvas, right? So we're gonna take a two inch brush like this. It's a brand new one, basically brand new. I've used it a few times. And we're gonna kind of tap into the thing and then pull it in one direction, but they all have to be the same direction. Can't pull this one this way and that one that way and that one that way, right? So we're gonna start up here. Maybe we'll grab it and pull it just like that. And if we're pulling like that, we need to continue with that same amount of pull. And now you have this little bit that came down and smacked on. Fantastic, right? If we add just the smallest little bit of paint up here, just to brighten this area up a little, and then continue with our small little grabs and pulls, right, and in those same angles, otherwise it's not gonna look right, Josh. Same angles. Bang, just like that. Maybe take the smallest bit of pressure and pull down on it. And just like that, you got a cool little bit of Northern Lights, right? Now we can go add and extend and do all sorts of crazy stuff. So we'll bring in a little bit more white into that yellow. I'm gonna come over here and I'll lap it up onto the brush a little bit more than we had before, right? And then I wanna do some crazy like, and these cool little shapes come in, right? All with the same brush, haven't washed it. It's got all that color on it still. And again, we're gonna take it, we're gonna pull it in that same direction that we did with the other one, right? So it's not basically straight up. It's going in that same downward direction. It's coming down smacking, just like that. We're not shooting straight up, we're going off at an angle, right? Just like that, and we'll pull down that same sort of angle. Get these very cool little Northern Lights starting to show up. Get a little, same brush, not adding any paint to it. Maybe we came in a little bit of a wavy one. Came in like that. Right? You can always go back and change it and do different things. Grab it, slide it up again. All sorts of ways, soften it. You can make it really soft. You can make it disappear if you wanted to. You know what I mean? You could really blend it all the way and have it just become part of the sky and start over. You just have a lighter colored sky. Come in here with our white and yellow. Again, just gonna come in and brighten up some areas. Maybe change the angle of that guy just a little bit. And we'll come in here again, grab that same angle backwards, just with the tip, the corner of the brush, and you slide them up, right? We're layering all these little bits on top of each other. Going in, brightening it up, layering different areas, pulling in the same direction. Come back, reload up our brush again. Load it up. Now we'll come in here like this, different angle, right? Maybe that guy was a little bit rounder. Maybe he came off over here too. Why not? 
It's never, you never just have to have one, right? We'll come in here, same angle that we're pulling back on, so they all match. I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go up, and push a little bit harder if I want it to grow a little bit further or blend in a little bit more. Down at the same angles. Very cool, right? Very bright looking, very neat. I like this one. What do you guys think? Beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Whoop, just throwing stuff everywhere. Make that guy stretch him out. You just gotta make him those same little angles. That's all what it's about. Sometimes we do them straight up. Sometimes we do them off to the side. What if we had a whole nother little band over here on the side that we could pull at a different angle? Right, maybe this guy was like further off in the distance. Way back there. So we'll take him. More straight up than anything else, really, with this guy. Right? Very cool. He's further away. He's not on the same little plane that we're on. Very neat. And the more you want it to soften, you just push a little bit harder. Pull it a little bit more. Right? Push it further. Very cool. Very neat little sky. Very neat. I want to do one more that's like... Just coming in, maybe right down on top of everything. All right, come back, same pressure, same swipes, dragging it, pulling it back the other way, softening it, different little ribbons, different little things come down, right? Very cool, and that's our sky. That is literally, bam, there's the sky, perfect. Let's grab a little bit of our liquid white just on the end of a small little liner brush, right? Dab it into our little bit of our mixture of our yellow and white. Go back for one more little dab, because I never grab enough the first time. And we'll come in here and load it up, and then just pop in a couple little far away little stars, little dabs, right? I find when you spray them in with your brush, sometimes it can get too messy, or it'll leave like a glob of paint, right? So if you just come in with the teeniest, tiniest amount of pressure and paint on your brush, and what do we always talk about, Riley? What are the three P's of paint with Josh? The amount of paint on your brush, the amount of pressure and practice. That's it. That's for anything, for, for northern lights, for stars, for clouds, for mountains, for trees, for your highlights, for your shadows. It's all about the paint and the pressure and everything else. Look at that. Some of those are just shining so brightly through the northern lights, you can still see them. Fantastic. Wash that little brush off, and now we're ready to throw in a big old giant mountain. <clears throat> so. Tell us what time it is, where you're watching, where you're watching from, and what's your favorite sandwich? I love to know the sandwich question. So hit us with that food emoji that you love using the most, and let's just make up the most gigantic mountain you've ever seen. All right, we'll scrape up a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, a little bit of our crimson, mix these guys up into this very dark purpley color. All right, maybe we'll just stick with this dark purple. We won't even, we won't even lighten it up. Don't want any bright color to touch this one yet. And that way it'll remain nice and deep and dark, right? And the cool part about your Northern Lights is they may not look like this. They're, it's not going to be exactly the same, right? And I don't want it to be 100% the same. I want you to see something different and go in a different direction or blend it a little bit more or try this or try that and be like, you know what? Okay, that didn't work that time, but this time we're going to try this. So we're going to do it a little bit better. Okay, we're going to come in here with our black. Well, it's not really black. It's very dark purple. And we're going to scrape up a good amount of that. We're going to come up here into some of our Northern Lights. We have to push it back and start dropping some of that dark color down there. This is why you have to have that fair amount of light back behind your dark color, otherwise it won't stand out, right? If we took our mountain down here and we started going like this, how much harder is that to see than when it's back up against all this light, right? So, scrape all this up. I don't want all that paint down there. And come up here and just decide, what do you want it to look like? You got real tall peaks in your mountain? Are they very sharp? Is it kind of flatter? Do they go off in one direction and then maybe this hill came down in this side. Maybe it was flat or maybe it came up. Maybe they're like a little snake's back. Maybe it looks like stepping stones. What does yours look like? Right. Pulling off our little bit of mountain. Say we'll go down this way. We don't want to use it all the way to the edge. I never like going all the way to the side. All right, and then I'd, who knows? There's another little peak over here. Why not? All right, come up, baby. Save that star if we can. Poof, just like that. Pull it off. You want to scrape up the remainder of this paint because if you don't, you're going to have too much paint 
and with any amount of pressure, it's gonna grow too far. Have you ever been doing a painting and you're like, oh, I, I tried to do a mountain, but it took over my whole canvas, right? You probably had too much paint and you probably didn't scrape away any of the excess paint that you didn't have, right? That's paint with Josh, tip number 317. Scrape away that excess paint. Where we got people watching from, Riley? Uh, let's see, Massachusetts, Caitlin from Massachusetts says, the sandwich question is tough. Whatever it is, it needs chips in it or off on the side. Hey, I mean, you can't go wrong with a, uh, a tuna sandwich with like ruffle Lay's chips in between the bread and the tuna. You crunch it all down. Ah, oh, I'm telling you. I'm telling you that's a sandwich. Never, never let go says any sandwich with bacon. That's a good sandwich. You know what I just had for the first time was a, was a pepperoni and bacon pizza from Domino's. It's the first time I ever had it. And uh, it was really good. We've got South Carolina, Utah, Tennessee, Ohio, Arizona, Arkansas. Ooh, we've got someone from Alaska. I bet they see hey, hey. person. Yeah, right. I would that would be my dream to go see the Northern Lights in person. It'd be my absolute dream. So we just have to paint them. You know what I mean? Alright, now we've got our mountain. Let's grab our one-inch brush. Just like this old nasty one inch brush. We're gonna take that one inch brush and come up here and just grab and pull and start to shape our mountain. What does our mountain look like? And I got a little ridge over here. Maybe we came down this way and we started to create a little bit of ridging here, right? We'll pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. But I'm not, I never like going all the same direction, right? And if you wanna really see it, tap into your white just the smallest bit into your bright side, and then you'll see what your mountain is gonna to start to look like, right? just use that little bit of color. You don't, you want to keep it dark. Don't let it get too bright, right? That's why I don't like using that, but just to show you guys on the camera, cause it's hard to see, right? Add a little bit of white in there just so you can see what your mountain's starting to look like. Okay. And then maybe if all of our light's going to be on that side, we'll have to leave this side a little bit darker. But again, I don't want them to all go the same direction. So why don't we take this guy, and take all of his darkness and push it in front of there. Look at how those two line up like that. Oh, that is so cool. Like you get to throw a little valley in there just by making a little smiley face. Perfect. That's all you need, right? Again, I'm just going to take the smallest amount of white just so you guys can see. I do not recommend you use white, right? I just want to show you what we're looking at. And maybe we take our dark, maybe our, our bright sides over here, right? Just to make it easier for you guys to see my vision, right? I've got to have a bright side, got to have a dark side to everything. And we'll add our bright side back in there. Now, this guy, if we were coming down this way, right? I don't want to continue doing that all the same way. So why don't we take him and we'll pull him down in front of this bit of mountain, right? Or have them connect. Maybe they go down, maybe another little piece starts coming down this way and we throw that in the light and that in the shadow. It all depends on what you guys want yours to look like, right? It's not about mine. My, I've done this a million times. Okay, this is painting number 670. And granted, not every painting has a mountain in it, but I've done tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of mountains and I'm here to tell you it does not matter. It doesn't have to look like this. It doesn't have to be the same shape. You don't have to have three peaks. You don't have to use the same colors. It doesn't have to be the same size. Your canvas doesn't have to be landscape. It can be portrait way. However you want yours to look, right? It does not have to look 100% like whatever video of mine you're watching, okay? Now let's decide if we have all these gorgeous colors, why don't we make up a little bit of shadowing with our blue. Let's get our little blue pile over here, scrape up some white. Throw that in over there too. Oh, look at that blue. And now you don't need a whole lot of white. The white is so powerful it wants to take over very fast, right? So you don't need a whole lot. And we gotta have a, a bright highlighty color. So maybe, I don't want it to be super yellow, so I'm just only gonna use the yellow that I had in that tiny amount right there and just add a bunch of white to it. So it's mainly white, right? It's got that little bit of yellow tinge. I like that, just so it's not pure white. I never like having it pure, pure, pure white. Especially the further away that you are in the distance, the less bright your highlights would be. And then as you got closer, that's when you get your real bright ones up here, right? So maybe just because of that, let's add the smallest little bit of that blue into there. And we're just going to change it to this soft little bit, right? It changed it, darkened it the smallest bit, but it's still very bright, especially in comparison to our bit of blue over here. Right, which we just darkened with a little bit of our purpley color just to dull it down. And that way these two will play, they'll kind of bounce off of each other as light and shadows. 
So I'm gonna get our bigger knife because it works a little bit better when we're doing bigger, longer, swipey mountains, right? For, for whatever reason, you don't have to use the big knife. You don't have to use Bob Ross products. You can use the plastic knife. I, I wish I could find mine. Is it over here somewhere? Oh, I had the, you know, I still have my original one that I very first started with. And uh, it's one of the big plastic knives, looks just like this. And for whatever reason, that plastic knife broke easier for me. And so I used it and used it for a long time. And then I was like, Josh, you should probably figure out how to use like an actual tool versus a piece of plastic. So I forced myself how to use these, right? Forced myself to learn how to use these. We're just skipping whole words over here. All right, let's get a little bit more blue because I realize we have a lot of shadowy area and I never make up enough shadowy color. So a little bit more blue, a little bit more white, but again, grab that little bit of purple just to dull it down so you get that kind of grayish bluish color. Wipe off your knife so it's semi-clean. Scrape up a good amount because I like doing our shadows first. So we get a good amount like that. All right, it's probably actually too much. Take away half that. We'll come over here and decide, right? We wanted all of our shadows on this side. So just very lightly touching whatever happens, happens, right? Whatever sticks is gonna stick in there. And look at how I'm turning my knife blade. Watch the handle over here, right? It's not more about this. This is where all the cool stuff happens right here, right? But this is where you do the learning and you see my, my blade come up. That must mean that my knife is turning, right? It's not, I'm not just a robot up here like this. Uh, 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 uh. You gotta have that rotation, let it spin in your fingers. And that way you can make cool little valleys and peaks Right, if that's in the shadow, maybe maybe most of it's in the shadow. There we go. And as we start going, we start rotating up and changing and pushing, but our, our brush is almost about to hit the canvas over here. That's how flat we are. So if you're painting flat on a table, you need to be doing it down like this, where it's you're just dragging it over the edge, right? Almost getting finger on your finger, uh, uh, paint on your fingertips or on the back of your knuckles, depending on how you hold it, right? You gotta have that right angle, otherwise it doesn't really work as well. Can't go in there like we're trying to scrape it like this, right? We're not trying to scrape it when we get up here on the canvas. We're trying to let it flow off. So we scrape up a little bit, come off to the backside of our little mountain up here, stay along our little edges, and just look, as it drops off, it wants to go in different places, just let it grab in those places. Right? We're not trying to force it in there. I know I want my little ridge in here, right? But everything off the back of that ridge is all into the shadows anyway. So really doesn't very much matter what happens back there is the point. And like I always say, I'm always telling you it doesn't very much matter. It really doesn't. Like you can believe me, it doesn't. Let's throw a little bit of shadow back in there, maybe the smallest little bit back in here. But look, when they cross over, we have to go back in and make sure that our swipes are telling that story correctly. Otherwise it's gonna be weird, right? Let's do one more little bit of shadow. Scrape up a little bit of blue on the back half only. Almost split it in half and then you can start to judge what you want it to look like, All right? Like maybe that guy's had a whole little bit, but maybe in here we can connect these little pieces and change what it looks like just by adding a little bit of shadow or light in a certain area, right? It's very cool. Very cool what you can do and how you can change it with one little swipe is all you gotta do, right? Very neat. Okay, let's go into our whitish color, that kind of whitish blue and watch how bright it comes out up here. Ooh, it's got a big chunk of yellow in there too, very neat. You know, it starts to fall off just so, so, so lightly. The, the mountains are not our focal point, you know, of the painting itself. <clears throat> Unless you're painting all mountains, in which case you'll have more down here that are a little bit closer, right? So these ones that are further away, you really don't have to worry about it. And I know I say that a lot, right? You don't have to worry about it. The heck is that? Is that you, Travis? Travis just sent you Leon the kitten. No way! I was oh like, my what? God, that was so cute. I was like, what is that noise? There we go. You're awesome, Travis, man. Like, you are literally awesome, my dude. I very much appreciate you. So, like I said, we're going to scrape up the smallest little bit. Right? Not a whole lot. Like a little eighth of an inch. Come back into those light areas and just so lightly touch. And whatever falls off, falls off. Right? So lightly. Sometimes not even touching with the whole bit of knife. Right? And again, we can't have them crisscross like that. That doesn't make any sense. So we'll go back to our blue, slide it down over that little bit of white. See how they start to blend together. Not trying to cover every single thing, but not trying to let them be too bright. You know what I mean? Don't want to forget about our little guy back here. Just trying to touch with the corner of the blade. Smallest bit. Probably should switch to the small blade for this guy or just drag it down with the corner, just like that, right? 
It's a bad craftsman that blames his tools. I always say that. You can do anything with anything. I've always said that as well. Right, a little bit of shadowy back in there and just help. Oh, I almost just fell over. Just help that little bit, drag it through, hiding some of that little bit of shadow, lining back up with our little swipes, just like that. You start to build it, it's so cool. Remember guys, you can purchase this painting. It's painting number 670. If you go to my paint, uh, my Etsy store, which is paintwithjosh.etsy.com, and you go over there, and uh, you can purchase this painting before we even get done with it, which is gonna be cool. And we had a little bit of light sneak. Bang, just sneak back in there like that. Oh, that's neat looking, right? And again, if you don't like it, you change it. You go back, you add a little bit of blue, or you let a little bit less show, right? Maybe not so much. Oh, just that little sneak right there is perfect. And then you can just imagine we've got this very bright moon over here casting all this light, or it's all coming from the auroras. Really, really, really cool. So we're gonna scrape up our last little bit of white because we might have just made just enough for this once. Scrape that up, come over here, and let it fall down, very light pressure, right? You decide what it looks like. Maybe I want my bit of shadows to come a little bit down this way, right? Because not every direction has to be the same color either. You can have shadows coming down your other direction over here, right? No one's here to tell you you can't do that. But it's all about how you highlight it. So maybe if there's a deep shadow here, maybe we had a little bit of light projection come out above that guy, which is what's casting all of that shadow back in there, right? All about how you shape it, how you play with it. And then when you finally do so, when you see, when you do something and you go, oh man, like that's cool. I need to save that. I need to remember doing that later. That's when the real joy of painting comes out because you're like, oh, I can't believe it worked. Like I had this idea and I did it and it worked and holy, you know, somebody wants to buy it. My goodness, like it's, it's such a cool feeling. Such a cool feeling, especially when you, when it's like us, when I literally, I'm making it up as we go, right? Deciding what's gonna look good, what's not gonna look good. How much paint do I need? How much, you know, highlight do we need to make some more? Do I wanna make it more shadowy on one side or more light? What do I want to have show through? Remember that black, you gotta have that kind of purpley mix. I always say black because it looks black, but it's not black. Man, that's a cool looking mountain, guys. Maybe we take a little bit more of that little bluey shadow and we do that same thing again. Have another little bit just coming down, All right? And then we come back with our light, mix that up. Get that light blue color back. I don't want it to be pure bright white, right? Smallest little bit mix up into here. Otherwise, it's our, if it's so super bright white back here, then our foreground's never gonna make sense, right? So we'll come back over there, and we had that whole nother little projection, just sat out there, right? Start to fill in however you want it to look, however thick you want it to be. You know what I mean? On black canvas, you don't need so much texture. And on a white canvas, you find yourself doing that a lot more, but on black canvas, you really don't. It's, it's everything shows so brightly on a black canvas that you don't need to do much, right? Maybe we had that whole little ridge back in here. Watch this as it comes across that green underpaint that's under there, that under color. Oh, what if we had a little bit? Oh, guys, this is gonna be cool. But look at all the darkness we leave, all this unpainted area, right? Because you don't have to paint every single thing. Not everything has to be covered in a color. You wanna leave all this dark. That's why we're on a black canvas, so we can leave completely unpainted areas of the canvas, at least that's what I like to do. Let's grab up a little bit more of that bluey shadow, come underneath here and decide maybe there was a, ooh, just with the downward and a little spin to the side, we got a cool little ridge back in there, right? Very cool. Add the smallest bit back here before we do any more detail in the front because we're gonna lose it, right? Let's take our two inch brush, just like this. And we're gonna come in from the side and just start very lightly. See how it starts to drag it up and very softly. If you have too much pressure, you're gonna ruin it. So just like you're trying to touch your baby's cheek, just softest, softest little bit. The teeniest, tiniest amount of pressure you can possibly do. Otherwise you'll take that paint and move it, right? It's textured, it's thick. We don't want it to move, I want it to stay there. Just wanna soften it, smallest bit. All right, take this guy, we'll go down at this little 
downward angle, so soft. I'm not trying to drag it. I'm not trying to extend the paint. I'm just trying to make it soft. So, so, so soft. Maybe this guy over here, just by dragging the smallest bit of that light color, you start to change different things, leaving little dark areas, right? Maybe we'll come up into our light and then into our shadows. So soft though. Like Bob was not kidding. Three hairs and some air. That's literally all you need. And then work with those same angles that you worked with your knife with, right? If you came down this way with your knife, you have to go back up against the grain, just softening it enough to where it makes it look like it's far away. So far, right? This side's a lot more blurrier than this side. And a lot of people go, I liked it better before you softened it, right? But the part of the video that you're not seeing is the part when we do our foreground and those bits in the foreground have to have that texture. If your texture is the same in the distance as it is in the foreground, it's not gonna make sense to our brain. It really hurts my head having to explain that. All right, we'll come over here, so soft. And again, I'm not touching every single piece with the brush or with just the few hairs of the brush. I don't know if you can see just how few amount of hairs we're actually using. Look at this. Just the small, like me, he wasn't joking. There's probably 10 hairs that we're using right here to make it so, so, so soft. All right, now I'm gonna come over here, those same angles, just gonna work it down a little bit. Maybe we'll start to create the illusion of this little valley down in here again, right? And this could turn into one whole big mountain painting, which it just very, very well might be. So we're gonna come up here along the side, so soft. And this is very bright, right? And I, I wanna leave the edges dark. So don't get a lot of this excess color right here on the side, right? Sometimes we gotta flip our brush over or go back Dab your brush off on a paper towel. You don't have to wash it. Go dab it on a paper towel. Look at that, just making it a little bit softer, leaving some areas that are very uh, thick and in focus, just like a camera, right? You think about it, I got a lot of new followers and a lot of them are photographers. And they're like, oh, this is, you know, it's helping me take better pictures or whatever. You know, the scenes lining up there, whatever it is. But I've had a lot of new people saying uh, that it's that I've helped them out or they're excited to try painting. I've gotten them excited enough to try painting anyway that, uh, you know, they can't wait to send me pictures of their stuff and I can't wait to see them. Look at that. Let's connect this little bit right in there. But we left that area still very dark, right? But look at that. Just the little difference of two little swipes of paint in the right direction with the right amount of pressure. And you can get all those little shadowy bits back there, right? And again, if anytime we put anything new on, you got to go back and soften it. So soft. So soft, just like this. It's so funny, people tell me all the time that I'm stealing Bob Ross's uh, sounds because I go, right? So now, instead of that, I'm going to go like this. This is the way you put on the snow, right? You go, shazoo! Just like that. Is that better than going, <laughs> That's what I want to, I want to, I want to ask the haters. Is that better than, than the shoo? No? Yes? Anybody? Caitlin? Was that funny? It was funny, but I, I like the, the original noise better. Right. And it's funny. Like, I'm not trying to copy Bob when I make that noise. It just comes out. Like, he found the perfect noise, and it just comes out of me. It doesn't... It's not a, not a planned thing. Like, I have no paint on the knife, right? I'm trying to scrape up. Nothing's coming up. And so I'm using very, very, very light pressure just dragging any little bits that want to fall off the knife and having them blend in. And you create that light and dark, light and dark, right? It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay, now we're going to take that brush that has no paint on it, except for this very small amount that we had accumulated on the side of the brushes, right? We're going to come back in here like this. We're just going to start to tap. <clears throat> and by tapping, we're grabbing a little bit and working it down. Grabbing a little bit and working it down. And every time we tap, it's mixing with that green or blue undercolor underneath, right? And so you start to create all this mistiness. A couple little taps. You start to feed. What do you want your mountain to look like? You can shape it still. You can still shape it, right? Do you want to go straight down with your fog? Do you want to go off to the side? Do you want to make it more flat? What do you want to do with yours in order to have yours look like yours, right? Coming in here, going to the same direction because we took our knife and we swiped down this way. So we're dragging that mountain down. Oh, look, we just grabbed a little bit of that super bright and it tried to come down too. It just starts to light up, right? So now we're going to go this way, only using the tip of the brush, grabbing a little bit. Look at how much it'll grow down, right? You don't have to do much. So tap it, tap it, tap it. Very small. Let it blend its way in, right? So it's not so bright. 
That's a big mistake I see beginners make is they'll they'll have it like super bright down here and it won't make any sense, you know what I mean, as fog. You kind of got to tap it out and let it blend. Every tap, it's blending with that undercolor underneath. So we'll come down like this. All right, now again, we went this way with our knife. So we're going to go that way with our, our brush and it just starts to create this very misty, foggy look. And you can do it as much as you want, make it as soft as you want. Come back over here. All right, now we're gonna come over here. It's gonna get very bright because we have a lot of bright color. So I may need to stop and go and dab the brush off if it starts getting too bright because I wanna keep it dark over here. So maybe light pressure. No, it's working its way in. It's working its way in. There we go. All right, look at all that fogginess. Leaving some of those areas where the snow breaks down into that deep, dark shadow. Those mystery areas, right? What's happening over there? And if it's so bright on the edge, it's got to be bright there too. Fantastic. All right, I'm going to take my one inch brush now because the two inch brush gets very big. Two inches is big, ladies, when we're talking about brushes. If it was on your face, it'd be big. Using a big old two inch brush to do your makeup? Like, come on. All right, now we're going to swipe up back into that whiteness. Don't worry about if you tap and leave stuff underneath here, right? It's no big deal. Anything that happens underneath, you can always fix. So we've gone through, we've tapped out all of our little bits so we can create that mist. People ask me, how do you make the fog? Well, I don't, it sort of makes it on its own, right? It sort of happens on its own. And that's the fun part about painting is yours is gonna look a little bit different than mine. It's gonna be a little bit different than Sally's and a little bit different than Claire's, and a little bit different than Roberta's, a little bit different than Caitlin's, right? Everyone's is gonna be slightly different and that's the best part about art. All right, we're gonna come in just using the top few bristles, right? Not using the whole brush, just the top few. Mixing it up, making it as soft as you want to make it, almost like a cloud, right? And then you get those very, very, very cool, soft little edges where you may notice there, there, there's some detail under there. There might not be some detail under there. And you're like, what is going on, right? So let's decide. Maybe we had some water back there. And if I was going to paint like a lake, I would go with a little bit of our white because we have all those undercolors underneath. Remember, if you're only on a black canvas and you don't put the green and the blue underneath and you just come at it with white, it's going to be very bright and it's not going to blend away, right? The only reason all this white blends away is because we put we took the time and we put those undercolors on the canvas at the beginning of the video, right? You guys remember that. You guys remember. So let's decide where we want our water. And I'm going to come in with the brush. Looks just like this. I love doing this on the TikTok. Bam, we're gonna come over here and decide just by pulling down a very small amount, just like we make our wet sand, right? Don't wanna have it the same everywhere and the paint's gonna pick up on the brush and grow. So maybe we push a little bit harder over here, a little bit softer over there. Leave a little bit of difference, right? And that's all we're looking for is a little bit of difference in color. Take our two inch brush like this. And we're gonna come back and just pull down as straight as you can be, right? And the more you pull, or the more times that you mix it, the more kind of soft, reflective water it's going to be. And again, it doesn't have to be the same. Don't have to have it be bright across your entire thing. Soft little bit. And the more and more and more you do it, the softer it will come, right? And then we take it, go sideways, swipe out all of those vertical stripes. See the difference? You got the vertical stripes over here. Really work these guys out and you create all that beautiful sheen of the water. Just like that. Oh, it's fantastic. Leaving some dark area at the bottom. I never like covering up the entire canvas. Now look, it looks like fog rolling in across very still water. Oh, it's fire. I love you, Josh. You paint the coolest paintings, Josh. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. You know, we might just leave it just like that. That's That looks really neat, Caitlin. That looks I think it needs some trees. Oh, no. Okay, we can do some trees. Actually, I'll put a tree right over here. Or maybe right dead center in the middle. Just big old honking massive tree. Okay, but before we do that, if we're going to add some trees, then I want to have I want to have a distinctive water line back here. So I'm going to take my, my fan brush, just getting the very tip. And then we're going to come back, small little line. About as straight as you can be, right? It's very far away. It doesn't have to be super bright. And you don't want to push too hard like that. You'll leave too much paint. But guess what? There's so much paint underneath it that the more we push and soften it. What's that? Oh, you're the man. Whoever sent that? I love you. Ah! I love you. Okay, we're going to come in here like this and just soften it, right? 
All you got to do. So even if you put a little bit too much or it's a little bit too bright, it's okay. Work at it. Stretch it. Mix it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It'll soften itself until it goes away. All right? Now we have this very far away little bit where the mountain comes down and meets the water, right? Maybe it's a little bit of fog back there. Who knows? Maybe it's a bit of water line. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Maybe I want it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna take a little bit of our black or our purpley color. And just underneath that very bright area, we're gonna drop a little line of darkness, the smallest bit you can get, right? And that way, now it took it from water into that bright area as a little bit of faraway land on the other shore. Right, we take our darkness, because again, it's nighttime. Dang, just like that, I love that. Right, and again, you can take it and blend it until it's whatever you want it to be. Look at that, just be soft as velvet, baby. Woo, Chanel it. Okay, let's take a little bit of the white now, and I wanna come back, now we can rotate it, and that darkness will be the land. Or you can just go back right in between it, dropping off a little bit of a line, just like that. Doesn't even need to be the straightest thing. Take our brush, soft little thing. Bang, you got that bit of darkness that you can now feed back underneath your mountains. Very cool. Very cool. Take a little bit even more pressure, drag it a little further over to the side, just in case. Just in case we need it. All right. Now let's make up some a big bunch of color and we'll do our, our foreground trees because Caitlin loves the trees so much. And we'll take our blue, black, and crimson. We're going to mix up a giant pile of it. Really need it to be a big pile. And you want it well mixed, right? You don't want it to have blue and crimson and black streaks through it. You want it to be all the same kind of very dark black mixture. Now let's grab a brand new paintbrush. You know what? Let's get a brand new GAC Doctor out. I love these. Anita, she sent me this from the wish list. I think it's Anita Browning is her name on, uh, on Facebook. So thank you for that, Anita. I appreciate it. We're going to use a couple of these bad boys right now. These are tested and approved by Paint With Josh. They're uh, natural hog hair bristles. Fantastic, right? I want about a medium-sized one. And maybe that one's maybe too big. We'll go with this one right here. Beautiful. You guys send me these off the wish list and I use every single one. I'm not even kidding, right? <clears throat> I can never have enough paintbrushes because they start going from this into this. They start splitting differently. And then, you know, it's time to replace them, right? They're only $10 for seven. You can't expect them to last forever. Or am I the only realistic one? Okay, we're going to grab the bigger, the bigger of the brushes that we grabbed out. And we're going to come over here and drop in a big old tree. So we're going to load up our brush full of color. Just like this. And then I'm gonna zoom you guys in on TikTok. How many people we got watching on TikTok? 204. Excellent. Thank you guys for tuning in. And as you can see, we're gonna load the brush just like this. And then, like I said, I'm gonna zoom in so I can show you how to do these trees up close and in person. All right, let's come over here. There we go. Right here on the edge, perfect. Right where all that glare is right there. Excellent. It's all right, we're gonna cover up all that glare with some dark paint. Okay, so we're gonna take our brush like this, all only on the tip, I'm gonna come up here, just straight down. Gotta come past where our water is back there. You can't leave it above, otherwise it's not gonna make sense. And you also have to start it above the tip tops of your tallest mountain if you want it to be in the foreground. Okay, we're gonna go back and load up our brush. And come in here, let's do like a downward facer like old Bob did. I'm just going to start dabbing it in. And as we go in, we start using the whole bit of the brush now. And dropping those branches off, right? You know, like that kind of looks a little funky, Josh. I agree. You can't just leave it like that. You got to go back and fill in all those spaces in the middle. Right? Travis you... just sent you the coolest motorcycle. Oh, that's neat. Thank you, Travis. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, buddy. There we go. Right, big old fat, saggy, soggy old tree back here. Just how we like them. Now I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna load up more paint onto the same old brush. I haven't washed it. I'm gonna load up the more paint on there. And let's come in and make a little bit smaller of a tree. 
because you don't want to go into your thick white or blue snow back here. All this thick texture, you don't want to get real far into that. So let's go just underneath, bring it down. And you have to remember to cut off some of your tree branches. The trees out there, they love living close together. They love their little friends, right? Everybody needs a friend. And each one of those trees has got a gorgeous a bunch party, of friends. Travis. What's a pool party? Just sent it. Man, you're awesome, Travis. I appreciate you, dude. You are wicked. Again, see how we came down below our horizon back there? It just helps make that further away. Pushes it further back, right? Go ahead, uh, Caitlin. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, I don't think he's ever sent that gift before to anyone because he does. He said, okay, that was cool. That was cool. <laughs> it was like a first-timer. That's neat. I appreciate that. Hey, you can see we took... Half of the right tree became part of the branches of the other one, so they can stay close together. You don't want to have them so stretched out that the tips of their branches touch, right? That'd be too far away. Let's do one more little guy right in here, right? Almost dead centered. Bang, right there. Oh, I love it. I love it. And we're going to come in very lightly, start tapping up. If your paint doesn't stick right here, right, because your white paint is so thick, that your tree won't stick to it and all you're doing is slapping at it but none of the color is coming off go into your paint thinner cup right your odorless mineral spirits take just the corn like just dip the very teeniest corner in and then go back and mix it into your paint you don't want it wet and runny right but you just want it the smallest bit thinner so i haven't need to done to do mine yet like that there we go trying to make it to where you guys can still see and i can see and we can make a tree just like that, right? There we go. Pop out our little branches. Back and forth. Here and there. Everywhere. Doesn't have to be the most beautiful looking tree because it's just the deepest, darkest shadows, right? And then we go back and highlight it with two different colors. What is that? Oh, you're the man, Travis. Travis! Travis is, is the man. Right that too. A sports car? Yeah. That's, that's wicked. Really cool. Okay, I'm gonna leave some room down here for our bushes to kind of pop up into this area, right? Which is why we've left that little bit of space. Maybe we'll have another little bush on the side of him. So we can start to piece out where our next little tree is gonna be, right? We'll come in here. Maybe if we paint enough trees, Travis will buy it. I don't know. Maybe there's a magic number of trees. I don't know. Let's come in here. If we're gonna leave space for a bush or two, right? Let's pop it up right underneath the ridge of this guy. Maybe as high as we can get, but very skinny. I don't want him to be very thick up top because I'm going to be battling all of this thick paint, right? So just slapping at it, very small amount of pressure. And then as we go down, we start popping backwards and forwards, right to left, just like that, right? Start coming down. I'm trying to get out of your way as far as I can get and still create the shape, right? Not everything has to be this big, fat Christmas tree. You can have little skinny guys, right? And then we're going to come back with that same thing. I'm going to try to do it this way and pushing it with the center of the, you know, the, the corner of the bristles. And then as the more that we push, the more it pops out and creates a branch. See that? So you pop down and you slap it out. Call them tappy trees. Cause we do taps at it. And some of the times Can you can we, get the uh, zoom out a little. Yeah, definitely. I should have, uh, should have thought about that. All right. Sorry guys. Sometimes we need reminders. Thank you. There we go. I like that sky. Okay. Oh, wait, is that better? You can see this guy? And then we're going to put maybe, we're going to put one more about right over here. So maybe we'll put a couple here. We got all this paint. Got all this paint because Josh always gets out too much paint. So you never have to have the same amount of paint on your palette as I have on my palette. I have enough for like seven paintings here on my palette. And uh, I'm painting, you know, I paint Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thursday on TikTok, Friday on YouTube and Facebook, uh, Saturday on all three, and then Sunday back on TikTok on Sunday night. So I always am rotating this. I don't think I've actually cleaned the original <laughs> piles. They just keep getting new paint added to them. So I get comments and questions all the time and they go, how do you uh, preserve your paint until the next painting? And I go, well, I just keep adding piles and then, you know, eventually scrape them up and get rid of it. All right, let's come in here like this. And I did, like I said, I wanted a few more little trees. Again, we're going to come in 
and have the trunk touch the outside branches. And that way they stay nice and what? Close together. I know. Because everybody needs a friend. Everybody needs a friend. It's true. Even me. I have very few friends. So I need all you guys and my followers. I love you guys. So let's take our fan brush. Just like this looks like an old axe. Like we could go and chop some wood with it, right? We'll take it like that. Come over again, very small little taps. The angle of the brush is vital. You have to be at the right angle. You have to have the right amount of pressure. A couple little taps up and little branches pop out. In little different areas, it's very cool. But you want it to be very thick, very dark, right? You don't want it to blend in with so much light color that you lose that super deep darkness, right? Even down here, see how it's a little bit brighter than it is up here, it's a little bit darker. So we need a little bit thicker paint down there cover up all that light right anywhere that it starts to blend in and get close or, or starts to brighten up you want to get rid of that light you don't need all that negativity in your life we want to stay dark on a black canvas right so we'll come in here mixing again mix 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 just like this pulling it out don't need a whole huge amount on the brush right it tries to climb up the bristles you don't need it all the way up to the, the, the handlebars or whatever this piece is called i don't know i didn't go to art school but you don't need it all the way up to that piece right Come over here. Maybe this guy will be a little bit taller. Can you see if I'm over here on the side of the mountain? I can see it. On your screen, we're all good. Okay, so we're gonna take this, fill it up with paint. Let's actually get a little bit more. And fill it up just for good measure. Take it like that. I'm gonna come up here, straight line down, a little bit taller than our mountain. Not pushing real hard, right? Very lightly, very light Logan pushing. Logan says zoom out some more. I guess people in the comments can't see that side. That's as far as it zooms out. Let's see. Is that better? That's like more center of the screen right here. Perfect. All right, let's get back to it. That brush was getting a little full. You can see how just how that new brush goes instantly purple. It'll never be new again. Never, ever. But the more you clean it, the lighter it becomes, right? Now, we're going to come over to this tree. Remember, there's a lot of thick snow up here that we're going to be battling against. So this is when I'm going to show you guys that cool little trick, okay? I'm going to load up the brush first because you got to go up and test it, right? If it, doesn't, if it doesn't work, then okay, we know what we can do. But if you don't test it and you just make your paint thin because you think you're going to need it, then you may make it too thin, and then it's gonna be hard to get our highlights to stick, right? So we're gonna come in like that, fresh, cleaned brush, loaded up with paint. We're gonna come up here, and now let's do this guy as an upward facing. No, we got another dent. No, I don't want him to be the same. So let's do it upward. We'll go upward, and we'll just start slapping into the canvas. And look as we come across all this white, immediately how much the, the paint starts to go a lighter color, right? That's not gonna allow any depth because there's no deep, dark shadows there. Look at it, immediately picked it up on the brush too. We don't want that. So let's wipe off that light color off that one corner, right? And I'm gonna go in and dip it like I told you earlier, just the smallest bit into the paint thinner, right? Not even enough for it to come off. But when I start to mix it, you'll be able to tell a difference and it'll be just the smallest, and we might not even have got enough. But I'm talking about you need the very smallest amount because a thin paint is gonna stick to a thick paint, right? We still need this to be sort of thick if we want our thin highlights to stick to it. So mix that up. I'm gonna come back up here, start going over it again. And it got a, it, it made it a little bit darker, right? We should have done it first. I knew it was gonna happen, but just to show you guys. Now watch, this is very wet now that we've passed all of that white. This has become very wet and I don't need it to be wet, right? If it's wet, like I said, that's gonna be very thin and a thin paint only sticks to a thick paint, okay? So we're gonna take our, our uh, Paper towel, go in and wipe away just the area of the tree, leaving all the snow back there, right? So just the area of the tree that we wanna work in. You can always go back and take that little bit of, of, of wet paint away, right? And the, the less wet it is right here, the more it will stick your, your deep shadows to the canvas, right? So just for good measure, why don't we go all the way down the trunk, right? Cause maybe yours is a little wetter than mine. So let's just practice this. We'll go all the way down the trunk, just about as thick as we want our tree to come out, right? So mine's at this shape right here. It's kind of like the, uh, 
I don't know, kind of like, it's, it's like an obelisk, right? All that white. Now, all we have to do is cover that area. And it's going to be very easy because the canvas is very dry. It wants to suck up that paint and remain very dark. See what I mean? So we'll come back into our dark color. Just like that. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's get a fresh pile because I don't want that thin paint to ruin any ideas that we had going. Let's just do this one black and blue. But now you can tell it's much thicker. Just from mixing it, I can tell it's thicker. We haven't touched it with our, our thin, uh, our, our odorless mineral spirits, our cleaner, our thinner, right? We haven't touched it with that. So let's get all the paint off that brush. Just like that, never, never all comes off in one go. There we go, a little bit better. So now you can see, and again, these things are 10 bucks, okay? So if you get a little bit of a fray or you get a little bristle that wants to come off, come on, it was $10. Like, <laughs> at least that's how I look at it. Let's just get another set of seven for 10 bucks. Like it's no big deal, right? And eventually they wear out and you have to anyway. So let's come back into that thick paint and come over here. And then we're again, we're gonna start popping up, making our little tree branches. Look immediately how much darker it is and how much more it wants to stick to that that canvas, right? We just fill it up around the edge because we can come away with our, our highlights, right? And hopefully you didn't make yours too big. Maybe you'll have to add a second treetop in here, which we could do easily. Watch, we'll go in here like this, put another little treetop right there, right? Just like he's friends with this little guy. We'll come in and we'll tap. We'll just do both of them on the way down. Bang, now that makes a bit more sense, right? If we have our little bit of tree branches. This is just the one side of the one tree. You don't have to do it all at the same time, right? Come back in here, start slapping at it, tapping at it, creating all of our little branches, bringing it down a little bit further than the rest of them. It'll make sense why we do that a little bit later. I come over here and I'm gonna try to do it this way so you guys can see the best and just slap out at it, creating all these little random shapes and random branches, right? Staying on the edge of our little bit where we had to wipe it away. We don't want that to show. We're staying out there, slapping at it, turning the brush over, and now in here, right, we can just fill up the inside, just as long as it's nice and dark and filled in, there's no light showing through. We've got all these two trees that are very close together, right, and then we can decide what we want them to look like. So there are no mistakes. So even if you just thought that was a mistake, it's not really a mistake when you won't be able to tell by the time we get done what went down, right? It'd be very cool. Okay, so now we're gonna take our brush, wash it off, and now we're gonna switch to that smaller brush. Not a switch, do the switch up, because if you try to do it with the same size brush, it's just more difficult. I'm just telling you now. So we'll take our bit of our smaller brush, and then we need to get a little bit of liquid white as well to mix in, right? So we'll get a little pile over here in our blue section, and a little pile over here in our white section. That way, whatever we do, these paints mixing with this liquid white will become very thin, and they will want to stick to this thicker paint very easily, right? Let's wash off this brush, make sure it's nice and clean. Before we go ruin it with any color, we wanna make sure it's nice and clean. All right. Now, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I always heard somewhere that you should paint an odd number of trees, like somehow it's better for the eyeballs if, you, if it's an odd number. I don't know. Again, I didn't go to art school. I don't know what's going on. So we need to get a little bit of blue, right? Grab that bit of blue, maybe snake a little bit of the phthalo green too, why not? It's a beautiful color if you mix them both up anyway. And then watch, we're gonna start to mix it with that white and it's gonna change and it's gonna be bright. Oh, it's gorgeous, right? A little bit more blue. Depends on how much white you have. I wanna have mine a little darker, but you need the liquid white in order for it to become sloppy and wet. And if it's not sloppy and wet, it's not gonna stick to this thick paint that's back here. Okay, so let's go through and do our shadows first. And what side was our, were our shadows on? They were all on the right hand side to match up with all the blue on our mountain back there, right? So we'll come back in here and it's very slippery and very wet in comparison to, you know, the normal thickness of the paint because we ran it through all that liquid white, right? You can take some over here. It's gotta be the right consistency. So it may take a little bit of practice to figure out what the right amount of paint and the right amount of pressure and the right amount of practice is, right? Like we always talk about, we'll go up here, touch the side, right? Just like that. Come in very small little taps, just on the right side, dropping little things, staying at the same angle, rotating the brush, pushing a little bit harder if you need to, 
to get to those darker bottom corner branches, right? Very cool. And I never like it to be like a perfect straight line. So we'll put a couple out there and then we'll have them crisscross back and forth over. Just a few little dabs. The brush is designed to make that shape, right? It's trying to do it for us. We just have to have the right amount of pressure and the right amount of paint, which is what, what, Caitlin, what do we always talk about? The three P's. That's it. The amount of paint, the amount of pressure, and practice, of course. Okay, a little bit more of our blue, mix it in with that white, just so it's nice and sloppy and wet. Again, we're going to come up on the right side of the tree, tapping very small little things, little flicks, little dabs, little here, little there. Right, coming out into our other section of tree because if it's behind here, it may not get all the way lit up, right? So you can add a few more little, little branches and little flicks out there. Very neat. All depends what you want yours to look like, right? And come over here, maybe we'll be able to do this guy at the same time. A couple little taps, little dabs, little like shapes, right? It's a bunch of little branches holding clumps of snow. So not all of them have to be the same. They're not all gonna be holding the same amount of snow. It's not a, a, a beauty contest of which one is the, the most like the other one, right? And come back, a little bit more liquid white just in case it gets a little too thick, right? That way it's, you have, you're constantly mixing, it's constantly becoming thinner so it will help it stick to these trees back here. Because as we all know, what did Bob Ross say? A thin paint will stick to a thick paint. Look at those couple little flicks in there. Oh, it's fantastic. Right, maybe these guys are so close that the, all of the little tree branches on this guy are blue because he's hidden behind his little friend back here. Right? But look at all the dark areas that you have to leave in there as well. You don't want them to be so bright that you know, you got, you've lost all of your darkness. That's not what you want. That is not what you want at all. I, like, I don't like it like that anyway. Otherwise, you lose all your depth. Right? You don't have any more depth, any more distance. There's no place for the critters to live. That's what Bob always used to say. If you lose all those dark areas, there's no more places for the critters to live, right? And it doesn't have to be super bright down around the bottom. You got to let them get darker. Let's come over here. We'll do our last little bit of shadows on the big tree. And this time I'm not going to add any liquid white because it's very wet. And it just keeps getting more and more and more runny. And again, you got to have the right texture. And that comes with practice, having that texture, having that feel, right? A little bit over here, slapping. Now, I'm not worried about the highlights on the mountain itself because this paint is very thin. It will stick to that thick paint back there with no issues, right? I'm able to come over here and try to do it this way. Just kind of hitting it with the side, letting the brush rotate out and tapping the canvas. See what I mean? But you don't want it. What was that? Oh, I ran back to see if it was a gift or something. You don't want it to, to be, you know, the same kind of shape all over. So I like doing it different ways, slapping up at it in different areas. And you get the branches to look like they're holding different bits of snow at different times. And I think the more random it is, the more realistic it looks, right? Versus having it look like you, you planned out every single piece about where every single bit of snow was going to lay. All right, now we're gonna come into our titanium white and that liquid white that we have, right? We gotta make sure that it's that right texture again, that right consistency of liquidy and, and white. And take it over here like this, over onto our big guy, hit on the left side of the top of the trunk now, just in case any little bit of light lit up those bit of branches. And then we're gonna start so, so, so lightly, sometimes not even touching the bit of tree, sometimes not even touching a bit of shadow. We're coming out over the shadows, right? That's the best part about painting. Not every piece has to touch. Sometimes when we do our, our bushes and stuff, the coolest thing about those bushes is, oh, leaving that area dark, oh yeah, is the, the bits of bush that aren't even connected to the bush. You know what I mean? Like we, in our mind, we know it is, but you can clearly see it's not. Okay, we're gonna come back over here. Since we use that one side, let's flip it around, get our bright side of our tree trunk, and we'll just start tapping up at it. Tap, 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 little branches, little flicks over our shadows, leaving some shadows, leaving some spaces in between the flicks. You don't have to cover every single bit, right? You gotta have those dark areas in there. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense. And look at our brush now. Look at the amount of darkness that we picked up just from touching it, right? Maybe we can get away with doing it on this side. 
Otherwise, go back and load up your brush again. If it doesn't come off easily like that, it's not coming off easily. So we gotta, we gotta get rid of all that paint, shake it off, clean it off. That's the most fun part about doing it is beating the devil out of it, right? Come back in here, a little bit more liquid white into our titanium white. It's gotta be that right, what? That right ratio. Otherwise it won't happen, right? We'll come up here, little taps, little flicks. Oh, there it is. See how they come off very easy? If it doesn't come off easily, something's wrong, right? The paint's not the right mixture. You don't have the right amount of paint on the brush. You don't have the right amount of pressure. Something's wrong. If it's not coming off easy, then it's not working correctly. Okay, now we've used up this top corner up here. We're gonna turn the brush over and maybe we can sneak in a couple little bits on this guy. You don't need a whole lot back on here. Maybe just a couple at the top, really. He's hidden in the shadows. So even with that small area, we're trying not to cover up all the darkness that's in that bit of tree either, right? Come over here. Maybe we can get away with this guy. Get up there. There we go. A couple little taps. And the harder you have to push at the top, that's bad. Right? You want to be able to just do little teeny tiny flicks at the top and have it come off the brush versus having to push real hard. Otherwise, you get these big globs way up here at the top. And that's not what you want. That is not what you want. A couple little things. Oh, so cool. I love painting these kinds of trees. Gorgeous. You just don't want to cover up all the, the darkness. That's the key, right? Turn that brush, shake it off, beat the devil out of it. It's nice and clean. We're going to come back for the last two little trees and come over here into the white, into the liquid white, both sides of the brush, same amount, same ratio of paint, right? On both sides. We'll come back over here. Tapping on the top, maybe we'll tap on this guy too over there. We have two bright tops, and then we'll come over here. Little teeny tiny pushes. If nothing comes off, move on, right? A couple little bits in there got lit up, and then the outside of this guy is our main foreground tree, so he's got to look the prettiest. So again, very light pressure. If it comes off, it comes off. If it doesn't, move on. Leave darkness in between the light areas. You have to have room for the critters to live. You got to. Bob was serious, man. Like my, my, my little ferrets, I guess, would live in there. They'd, they'd be looking for a real dark area to hang out in, right? Gorgeous. Two trees. You can't even tell that there's two. They're so close together. They've grown up as just best friends. Their whole existence. It's been fantastic. How long have we been streaming for, Caitlin? I haven't even looked. Oh, wow. This one's a long one. Hour and nine already. Okay. Now we're going to go back and add our bushes in. So again, we need to make up a little bit of that dark color, our black and blue, not any bit of crimson because that'll just make them the same as the trees. And that's not what we want. We want them a little bit darker. So we just mix up the black and blue we come in with our Bob Ross half inch round brush. Oh, someone's in the Etsy store. I wonder what they're favoriting. So half inch round brush looks just like this. We're going to come in and just tap into all that paint. Look at it. It's just all thick and nasty. And then we're going to come in here and start popping in, leaving a little bit of our shoreline back here, right? But having that little bit of messiness as well. Maybe we'll pop in a couple underneath these little bits of, of trees, just like that. So cool. Very deep. Tons of places for the critters to live, right? Come back in here. Tap it up. Scoop it up if you have to. Come back. Pop in a few more little bits, right? Doesn't have to be everywhere. And remember, we're going to pull out the bottom and throw a little bit of snow in here. So don't go anywhere. All right, I'm going to come over. I need to fill in this last little section right there. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. We can still see the water behind. You can still see the water line off in the distance. Very cool. Now over here, I might now let's do one more. We might as well. All right. Since I ran out of color, we'll just do black for this one. There we go. It'll all look black anyway. Come down around the bottom and now we'll have any bit of bushes all the way around the base of our trees. We'll come back with our one inch brush like this. And now we decide where do we want everything to live, All right? Maybe these guys came this way and as they go and they start to cover up, you can start to see where do you want your snow to live? Where do you want your shadows? Cause you have to have a shadowy side and a light side, right? Maybe all these guys would just kind of pull out at the bottom just like that. And it'll all make sense in a second. Let me show you. Well, let me show you. Do you want to see the snow first on the ground or do you want to see the highlights first? You guys tell me. You want to see what my idea is for the bottom or do you want to see what the highlights are going to look like?
Guys, anyone? Highlights or bottom, guys? You want to see what the snow is going to look like down here, or should we highlight the bushes? Um, I'm seeing mixed between bottom and snow right now. Okay. That's all right. Watch this. We're going to bottom. grab up. Bottom's winning out. Okay. We're going to grab up our white and our phthalo, uh, our Prussian blue, right? But not the, not the liquid white piles. We don't want that liquid white in there. We just want the real thick, firm paints. And we're going to come in with this little bit of bluey color and kind of decide if all of our blue shadows are on the back. Maybe these guys are casting just a little bit of shadow back over here. This cool little piece down here, right? All depends on your angles of your brush, how you're pulling it, how much you're pushing, how much paint's on your brush, right? All depends. We talk about the three P's all the time. Let's wash off that brush. We're gonna go back to our white, our pure white, right? Not mixed with any other color. So let's pull it off this way then. Ha ha ha. Beat the system, right? Load up the brush with white like this. And where do you think you'd have these very bright little sections of snow, right? And then, of course, it's not going to meet just straight in the middle. That's no fun. Got to have it climb up in different areas, having it cache different shadows. It's mixing in. It's constantly mixing with the blue and dark underneath. And then we're going to start to flick it back into those bushes. That just helps my brain make it seem like it's more realistic versus having a big glob out here. If we flick it back into those bushes and then get our little bit of brush strokes out. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Now you don't want your white to go too far though. My white is trying to get its way all the way over here. So we need to come back to that little blue a little blue section, then we can shift it back. It's like those little sequin pillows. You know how you fold it to one side and it's a one color and you push it back the other side and it's the other color? You do the same thing with the oil paints, right? You can slide your, your blues as far as you want, right? Again, take them, slide them up into those, a little, little upward flick as you get into them. Having it mix in, it's picking up some of the dark color, it's dropping it down, it's making our shadows a little bit darker even. Very cool. And take one more bit of the white, just from our most frontal thing, there we go. Blend in over here, very neat. So cool, I love this one, you guys. Okay, let's go and we're gonna highlight it. And then, remember, if you wanna buy this painting, you can purchase it right now before anyone else can get to it. If you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and make your purchase, then you can even name it, right? But if not, if nobody buys it, then we're gonna let the fans name it. So. Uh, start coming up with names. What would you name this painting? Write your names in the comments of what you would name this painting if you were to paint it or if you wanted to have it on your wall. What would you name it? Doesn't matter if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or TikTok. Tell me, what would you name this painting? And uh, Caitlin's going to read them out here in a second as we finish up. So get your comments in. We're going to load up our half round brush. Going to clean it first, of course. Clean all the darkness off. Now we're gonna load it up with that liquid white. Back into our liquid white pile and just start popping it into our white. Now the trick is for these highlights, you don't have to cover your shadows. You don't even wanna to touch all of them, right? I wanna go half above my shadows and pop in a little bit of light up there, right? Above the bush. So the, the shadow is about halfway, right? So come over here, maybe change, rotate the brush over and go above the shadows again. Maybe over there, leaving a little area in between to go with, with blue, right? You have to have some room to highlight with those, those uh, bits of shadow back there. Or a couple little bits in here. Maybe we'll do a few more on this side, tap them in, right? Got a little bit to show out there, and then we'll put some little bit of bush and some shadow underneath. And all of a sudden, you can't tell where the bushes start and where the trees begin or end or come down or how big the bushes are until you decide on what you want your snowy ground to look like, right? And like I said, keep the corners very dark, very lightly flicking it back in. We'll grab the littlest bit of liquid white back into our blue side. All right, gotta get the right amount of blue in there, tap it in, and then just behind that little bit of white, kind of add that little touch of blue, little bit, just so it helps our eye kind of feed into those darker areas. And scrape up that blue again, smallest little touch, not trying to cover the white, not trying to cover all the dark either, right? Just letting it sit in there. Just sitting in there, right in between. So it's light 
dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, everywhere, right? Every which way. Remember, hit us with the names. What would you want to name this painting? A few little bits here and there. Fantastic. Even take some of that blue, just because I want mine to be a little bit more bluey. Drop off a bit more of that blue back here. Just change it however you want it to look. You know what I mean? It's never a, a thing. This brush hasn't been cleaned, by the way. I just keep sliding it just like that sequin pillow back and forth like we talked about. Slide it this way, slide it that way. Swipe it up into our bushes. Get our little brush strokes out. All this stuff you can do because it's wet oil, right? It's not gonna dry on us so quickly that we won't be able to do anything else. And look, we left the bottom of those trees so dark you can barely even see anything. There's no nothing over there. Very cool. Very dark. Very cool. All right, well, let's throw the old family in, then we'll wash the brushes while you guys start hitting me with your names about what you would name this painting. So, read them out. Caitlin, do we have any names? We have quite a bit, quite a few. Excellent. Um, we have the bull. Um, Aurora Mons, which is Latin for mountain. Excellent. Uh, Auric Halo, Aurora River, the Luminous River, Nightlight Delight, uh, like Necrotic Valley, uh, Lost my place. It's all good. We're going to take the family while you're reading out places. We'll take the family and add them in over here. Uh, Necrotic Valley, Winter Borealis. Ooh. Snowy Ridge, Passage of Spirits. I like that one. That's cool. Northern Nord Light, Winter Magic. Uh, Corbel says, Above the Bush. Uh, oh. Winter Spirits, <laughs> uh, Aetherius, Ancestor Aura, Cradle of Light, Summit Plummet, uh, Auric Ingress, Life Returned, uh, Midnight Delight, Quiet Solar Storm, Determination Pink, The Peak, I like that. Tableau, tableau uh, Vivant, which is living picture. Uh, winter Solstice. Northern Night. Winter's Light. Excellent Midnight titles. Sky. Uh, we got a lot of ones, a lot of suggestions for this one. Winter Serenity. Remember, you guys can you guys can buy this one right now before the show is over, and you'll actually save about fifty dollars if you purchase it now versus after the show. Yes, and you can purchase it on paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Just search TikTok. That is it. I made sure the listing was active. It is in the sale. It's forty percent off right now, which brings the price down to one forty-seven for this painting. And then I think you'll add, you know, depending on where you live, taxes and stuff. But under 150 for my fabulous fans. We broke through 112,000 Facebook followers. We're over 128,000 TikTok followers. You guys are just awesome. All right, let's hit hit me with the with the the best few that you think. Like narrow them down for me, the best ones. Okay. Um I like Aurora River. Uh, there's another one I really like. Life Returned. And I like... Uh, where'd it go? Winter Borealis. Those right. are the three that I like the most so far. All right, guys. You only got a few seconds left before we decide. So hit us with your comments. I might choose yours. Uh, we got Northern Night. We just actually, I it's believe, sold. it sold. Just did uh, yeah. oh, the painting that was named sold. Northern Night. We're screaming yeah, in the comments. Me and Crystal are like, it's sold. Who it's sold? Who it's bought? Sold. Who bought it? They should be able to name it. Nicole. Nicole. So what do you want to name it, Nicole? Thank you for your purchase, by the way, Nicole. Now I won't go back and add anything to it. 
So, all right, tell them where you can find me, Caitlin, until we get a name for this guy. And in the meantime... You can find Josh on Facebook, facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. YouTube, youtube.com slash paintwithjosh. On Instagram, paintwithjoshk. Obviously on TikTok, you guys already know that one. Uh, Nicole would like to name it Winter Spirits. Winter, like winters with an S, winters spirits or winter spirits? Winter space spirits. Winter space. No, not space. <laughs> I almost had to ask for help on how to spell spirits. Winter spirits. Uh, yeah, okay, so tell, yeah, keep going. There's one more that we missed. What was the, how do you get to own one of these Paint With Josh paintings. You can own a Paint With Josh original by going to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Hey, and what a great way to start the weekend. Look at this reveal. Ba-boom! Fantastic. All right, now we got to do all the fun stuff about ending the tutorial before I run out of, of space on my device over here. Minute, An hour and 22 for this one. Okay. All right, so nobody leave. I'm just going to do the ending for the, the tutorial, which you'll see in a little while, a couple of weeks. All right, guys. Well, I can't wait to see your version of this painting. It turned out fantastic. And uh, remember to send it to uh, facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. Can't wait to see him. You guys take care. Have the rest of a good day. And bye-bye.